UFC 309 is coming up next weekend, and today, guys, I have the complete betting guide for you with timestamps if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with many YouTube channels, and welcome back to, like I said, another complete betting guide, guys. We're going to go through the betting recap, confident picks, underdog opportunities, fights that I do not believe you should be betting on, which there are quite a few of them this time around, and unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, which is Sunday morning, Unfortunately, there are no props, so we're going to skip the prop section for this week, and then we are going to go with the fun parlays. We're going to get into all of it, but first, we have the betting recap for you guys, and unfortunately, unfortunately, we had one fight that really did a lot of damage to us. So, if you guys have been following the channel, you would know that I've been testing a little bit with riskier bets, with longer parlays, and the first week, we had some success, but now, and this is what I always say when making parlays, guys, the reason that I stick to hard bets, even if they're at like minus 140, minus 150, things like that, that's typically where I would go and I would like hit it just straight is because there's always something bound to go wrong with parlays. Of course not. Like, of course it could work out. Like last week it worked out for us. And of course it was important to note, I'm only playing with literally $2 for every bet because I wanted to do this for about a month, but now this is kind of going ex somewhat to where I expected it to go. I didn't expect it to really work out. That's why I was only playing with, again, $2 for each. But I was like, okay, you know what? Let's see if I can make some parlays work out. Unfortunately, I'm almost at the point now where I'm like, I kind of want to go back to my regular strategy next weekend, you know? Regardless, of course, the picks were really good in general. The problem was Cody Stamen, Damon Blackshear over 1.5 rounds, and Melissa Mullins versus Claudia Segula over 1.5 rounds. Why? <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't expect it to happen. I was watching Melissa Mullins beat on Claudia, and I was like, no way. Are you kidding me right now? Are you serious? This is actually happening right now. But of course, it, it, the picks were end up being good. But this is what I'm talking about, guys. Is, uh, I, I like my hard, solid choices. I'll say it right now. If you guys are interested in either supporting the channel, following my journey through betting, or if you'd like to see exactly where I'm putting my money, where my mouth is every week, because again, I talk a lot about betting on this channel. You can check out the channel membership, which is very cheap compared to other channels. You can find it in the description down below, pinned comment, as well as right next to the subscribe button. Again, if you want to support the channel, anything like that, I would appreciate it. Also, Odds Gym is a sponsor of the channel. If you'd like to check out Odds Gym, sign up to that. You can use my link, and again, in the pinned comment description down below, using code CLENBAT. We would love to have you there. You can get a discount. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Let's get into the confident picks. And starting off with these confident picks, we have Oban Elliott. Guys, I'm convinced that Oban Elliott is going to... Is on another level compared to Basil Hoffes, who hasn't been able to put a nice, really win streak together. He's looked okay against Jack Del Maddalena, but that was a shock to everybody. And then we had the Mickey Gall decision, which was a little bit of a lackluster performance, I should say, against somebody you really should be beating. Oban Elliott, on the other hand, since we've seen him come to the UFC, he has been looking really, really good. And it's important to note, guys, I already have a full card breakdown diving into these fights as deep as I could possibly get. We These are just more of my basic sum-ups of all of those fights. So, Oban Elliott, I'm very confident to get the job done. He's younger. He's improving. I've just been way more impressed with him in general. Continuing on with the confident picks, guys, Mauricio Ruffy. I am, speaking of being convinced, I'm completely 100% convinced in the fighting nerds. <laughs> I'm probably going to just keep betting on them until one of them gets, and I don't even want to say fraud checked, until one of them has a like lackluster performance, but Ruffy has looked great. Long top hasn't. That's where I'm sitting, and I understand that Ruffy being a minus 800-ish favorite, that makes sense to me, to be honest with you. It makes sense. So Mauricio Ruffy is one of my most confident picks on the entire card. Let's continue on to another confident pick. Karini Silva taking on Vivian Arujo. Karini Silva is a confident pick of mine. This is one of those cases where you have a really good fighter in this division versus a fighter who is lackluster at best in this division. You have somebody who's in their prime versus somebody who's 37. This fight is going to absolutely be going to Karini Silva. I actually think that this card is really, really good to bet on. The next confident pick I have for you guys, and out of all of the confident picks, this is the one that I see going wrong if one is to go wrong. It's Charles Oliveira. The reason being, like Michael Chandler is a powerful guy. He, if he chooses to fight technical, which we can't count on, he has all the skills in his arsenal in order to beat Charles Oliveira. That's why I'm saying like if there is one that's going to slip up, it might be this one. Other than that, though, you have Charles Oliveira, who's 35 years old, still looking to be in his prime. You have the way that the first fight already went with Charles Oliveira surviving, being hurt, and then knocking out Michael Chandler. You have Charles Oliveira, who's one of the most dangerous submission artists in the UFC. I think that no matter what Michael Chandler does to Charles Oliveira, it will go a little bit more like the first time where Charles will survive and he will overcome. Michael Chandler, 
also is 38 years old, going on 39 years old, and hasn't fought in almost two years. He has been in one giant training camp, which could work out for him, or he could be completely overworked. I think that everything right now is working against Michael Chandler, and that's why Charles Oliveira is a confident pick of mine. The last confident pick we have for you guys is, it's John Jones. It's John Jones. What am I supposed to say? Stipe hasn't fought since 2021. He's almost 43 years old. John Jones is arguably the greatest fighter of all time. Not a ton to break down there. John Jones is a confident pick of mine. Now, <laughs> guys, I do have one underdog opportunity for you. Now, I know I'm going to hear about it. I know, okay? Because I feel like I'm the only person ever talking about this. Paul Craig is an underdog opportunity. Now, this is just because I am so not convinced of Bo Nickel, especially after his Cody Brundage performance. Paul Craig, we've seen him throw up some random submissions out of nowhere. What if Bo Nickel pick takes Paul Craig down? And Bo Nickel's striking hasn't necessarily impressed me either. Not that Paul Craig has good striking. I can just see this one being the parlay buster. That's all. And for Paul Craig, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but something like minus 700, or excuse me, minus, <laughs> plus 700, I think it's worth just a little bit of a sprinkle. Am I confident in this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm just saying, I don't think that Bo Nickel is the, as Top, Topology is saying, I don't think he's the minus 1,000 favorite that everybody's been talking about. Paul Craig has a ton of experience. He's wild at jiu-jitsu. I'm just saying, an upset can happen. An underdog opportunity is in front of our eyes. Now, guys, there are a few fights that I think it's very important for you not to not to bet on, and I'm pretty confident in saying this myself. Like, typically, I would, I would hear people out in the comments being like, okay, you know what? That makes sense why this fighter could win. But for these four fights that I picked, I, I really don't believe you should be betting on them. Maybe a round line, but for a hard pick, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mickey Gall, Ramiz Brahimaj. Two guys kind of in the same state in their career. Two guys who have been lackluster in their UFC. And on top of that, I don't know how Mickey Gall is going to show up because his striking and cardio has looked improved. Is that going to continue or did he have a couple good performances? I don't trust it. I don't like it either way. There's too many variables. Stay away from this one. Next up, and this one, <laughs> I almost didn't include this one because I could see a reason for picking one way over the other. But regardless, I ultimately don't believe that you should be betting on this fight. First of all, Ty Burr is taking this fight on short notice. Denise, which I've had a couple comments on the channel, which thank you for those of you who did comment down below, by the way. I wasn't sure if Denise cut any amount of weight for his performances. And because he was supposed to fight on the last card, I was worried about him making a second weight cut. But I didn't think that would matter because he is a decent sized heavyweight. Other than that, this is one of those fights. It's just a striker versus grappler matchup. Can Ty Burr get to the ground? Can Denise keep it standing? It's one of those fights where it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. Ty Burr is pretty quick for the division, but Ty Burr is almost 40 years old. I don't know. I'd stay away from this one. Lots of different things can happen. Lastly, Jim Miller, Damon Jackson. I don't know why I said lastly. There's another fight we want to talk about for fights that you should avoid. You have two fighters that are on the downslope of their career. Jim Miller and Damon Jackson both just took a career-changing beating. Chepe Mariscal and Bobby Green. We don't know, and especially at this age, this is something that you have to worry about. 36 years old, 41 years old, when they take the beatings that they did in their last fight, that might be enough to push them over the edge to say, okay, it's time for these guys to retire. They took too much damage now. I worry about how both of these guys are going to show up after that. And plus, you have two guys that are so clearly past their prime. So clearly past their prime. On paper, I think Jim Miller should win this fight. The day is coming where Jim Miller is going to show up and we're like, wow, okay, Jim Miller, it's time. I wouldn't say it's time yet. After the beating that he just took from Bobby Green, maybe that'll be the day he shows up, but I worry about both of them coming to the octagon. I worry about the time where Jim Miller is going to come in and finally look like he is almost 42 years old. He hasn't really looked like that yet, but I just worry about it. There's a lot of different ways these guys can show up. I'm personally staying away from this one. And lastly, this one out of all of them, I believe you should stay away from the most. Maybe, maybe a round line, but even then, I worry about Marcus McGee. Jonathan Martinez, Marcus McGee. These are two fighters that are, in my opinion, so underrated for the Bantamweight division. These are two fighters that I believe have a very, very bright future ahead of them. I think this is one of the best fights on the entire card. I cannot wait to watch this fight. Both guys are so talented, high level, great, and belong within the rankings of the UFC that I'm not sure who's going to win this fight. The reason that I initially, if you're interested, I picked Jonathan Martinez was because of the leg kicks and Marcus McGee has had issues with that. But other than that, both guys are extremely talented. They belong in the rankings. They belong with the top of the division. And I think that you should stay away from this one because these are two of the highest level fighters on the card going at it. I am so excited for this fight. Do not 
bet on this one. And lastly, guys, we have lock of the week. The fighter on the card that I believe has as close to 100% of a chance of winning is going to be Eric Anders. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, I said this about Chris Weidman against Bruno Silva. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Chris Weidman should never have won that fight. I love Chris Weidman. I'm a huge fan of Chris Weidman. But he has not been the same guy. He's slow, sloppy, and hesitant since his, since his leg break. He's 40 years old now. Eric Anders, while he has been very inconsistent, he should be bigger, stronger, be able to control Chris Weidman. He should be able to coast to a victory against Chris Weidman at this point in his career. If Chris Weidman somehow gets his job done, I will be happy for him, but it will be the biggest shock of who knows. Hear me out, okay? I will be more shocked if Chris Weidman beats Eric Anders than I would be if Stipe Miocic beats John Jones, because at least you have that ridiculous heavy power, and at least John Jones, like, we don't know how he looked on the feet at heavyweight. It could be super, super slow, right? That would shock me more if Chris Weidman won than it would if Stipe Miocic won, okay? Now, like I said, guys, unfortunately, there were no props to dive into, but we do have some fun parlays that we can make. Let's see. Let's see what we can do, guys. Let's see what we can do over here, okay? I'm over here on Betway because I like the interface. I moved over to Bet365. So, something my sister and I like to do every single card. We put 10 cents on every underdog to see what we can end up getting. It's always something fun that we can do. Oh, Paul Craig is going to make that a little bit more juicy than usual. Only $14,000. It was like last card. It was in the hundreds of thousands. I think it was almost 400,000 regardless. So what can we put together? Let's put, put some confidence picks together. Like we Obon Elliott, Eric Anders. Oh, that one's such a toughie. Like even that one's almost a pick em. Um, I didn't talk about Veronica Hardy, but I think she's going to win the fight, but not enough to really say she's a confident pick. And we're going to go Charles Oliveira, John Jones together. All of that's about six times your money. To be honest with you, I actually think that's safe. I really do. How much does, does John Jones really take off of that? To be honest, I actually really, really like this. If you want to even take off Charles Oliveira, these are something that I will consider doing. Obon Elliott, Eric Anders, and Karini Silva. I think that's actually a great parlay to put together, to be honest with you. Now, let's see if we want to just like, just do picks. Again, guys, this is a this is a more fun part of the video. So I'm going to pick Obon Elliott and pick Eric Anders. <sighs> Jim Miller, Jonathan Martinez, Mauricio Ruffy. I forgot to include Mauricio Ruffy on that. Sorry, guys. But even then, that's barely going to change anything. <laughs> Uh, Mickey Gall, Veronica Hardy, Greeny Silva, Paul Craig. Paul Craig's going to boost that up. And then John Jones. That is a ridiculous parlay. That is ridiculous. If we take Paul Craig off, what do we get? Okay. Paul Craig was the one that really boosted that up. Look at the difference in there. <laughs> That's funny. But anyways, unfortunately, there are no props out right now. And oh, excuse you. Sorry. Some people just started walking around. Hey, good girl. Hey, pretty girl. She's bored. I need to take her for a run, but it's raining outside. So I gave her the window a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like... It's been on and off raining. Regardless, that is a point that completely doesn't matter for the video. Like I said, there are no props, unfortunately, out right now. But in the meantime, where you could be watching me dive into some props, instead, why don't you check out this full card breakdown where we dive into these fights as deep as we could possibly go. I would love to have you guys over there. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.